Now you're noticing, do you hear that, that doubling? That has to do with the latency. Remember I was talking about latency? Uh, let's go ahead and open up our preferences. So we've opened up our preferences. I'm gonna move on over to audio. And uh, there's our buffer size. So when I hit play, I'm gonna try lowering the buffer size. Immediately that's a lot better, isn't it? So, let me just talk a little bit what's happening here and why we're hearing a double effect. Right now we are monitoring the signal before it gets to the computer from our audio interface. Our, uh, some audio interfaces, they have a software monitor switch, an ability to listen to whatever sounds are coming into it before it goes into the computer. This is instantaneous, there is no latency, it's, it's as if it's happening in real time. So when I, when I listen to that, that's how that's sort of working there. If I turn that monitor switch off, you notice we're not hearing anything. Let me uh, switch back to my sequencer page. Now we can hear it. If I'm, on, if I'm on a different track, and because I don't have the software monitor on, the only way I'd be able to hear that track is if the track is record armed. Again, you have to record arm even audio tracks. Now I'm listening to it post computer, which is fine. This is also why I'm at, uh, we're at 128 samples. Um, I'll turn back on the software monitoring. So now we're hearing both at the same time, which sounds a little phasey, but it's okay. If I drop this to 64, I'm surprised that it even works. You can't get any lower than 64. That's the lowest in terms of the, sample, the samples. Uh, this is gonna give you probably the, the closest to uh, at least in this program. There are other hardware devices. I think uh, Apogee came out with one that actually goes down to 32 samples, which is pretty fantastic. But this is pretty good. And I'm surprised that the audio driver works like this. Keep in mind that the smaller the buffer size, the more it's gonna tax your computer's processor. That means it has such a short amount of time to process it and spit it out. If I have a large buffer size, watch what happens when I hit play. So the trade-off here, this is pretty, pretty interesting. The trade-off, smaller buffer size, lower delay, higher buffer size, a lot more effects, a lot more processing that can happen. So typically what I end up doing is if I'm recording anything, you lower the buffer size, you record all of your live instrumentation, anything that has to get into your computer, then you'll hit the mix portion of your song. So typically when you're mixing, you're not, you shouldn't be adding anything more, although I kind of do it backwards too. I'll build up a really big arrangement and then record vocals. So oftentimes if that happens, um, I have problems with latency and the processor power because I've built it up so much. If I lower the, the buffer size too low, it starts to, to cut out. You'll notice down here in terms of monitoring, I can turn external on. So no monitoring through record, use external monitoring. So that's typically what I end up doing if I'm having to record vocals after I've built up a huge arrangement and I can't get the buffer size low enough. But in this case, it's perfectly fine. It's, it's uh, adequate. Let's just go back to, uh, I'm gonna hit stop for a second. 